Hello, Illuminated Souls. I'm Brianne Drioni. And I'm Tina Damore. Welcome to Shamans After Dark. Today, we're going to be talking about personal sovereignty. Yeah, let's talk about personal sovereignty. What does that mean? I mean, it's a bit of a buzzword, and I feel people are trying to find our way back to this place. And um, when you Google this word, it's not a definition that really fits. I know we've talked about this a couple of times and the, the Google definition, I think definitely falls short of how we feel what yeah. personal sovereignty is. But the Google definition says that personal sovereignty is having agency and autonomy over your life, being able to make your own decisions, choose who you are in a relationship with and how much space to give them in your life. It is having the individual power to walk away from situations, people, and communities that don't honor your sovereignty. And well, that's a good definition, yeah. right? It's it's yeah, a good definition, but I feel like we could go a little deeper. Uh, exactly. That means. Yeah. So our personal sovereignty definition is the ability to stand in your truth and your power and setting up healthy boundaries, speaking up, not sacrificing your values or abandoning your abandoning yourself in order to fit in or please others. Sovereignty is a place of alignment where you own your needs feelings and thoughts, even when they're not agreed upon by others. That's big. That's where that other definition, I think, falls short for the both of us. Yes, absolutely. And you don't have to worry about the disconnect. I mean, that's a big thing for people. So it doesn't mean you're not moving forward with compassion and empathy with others, but you're not compromising your values, self-respect, self-worth, and self-love. And this can be difficult to do for some women um, because they're going to rock the boat a bit and maybe seen as (gasps) difficult. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> and unpleasant or challenging or not being sweet and sugar and E-word space and all that good stuff, right? Like yeah. it's yeah, it's it's a uh, it's interesting when as women we say no or have boundaries or stand in our our own personal sovereignty or personal power, we get to be labeled as difficult, and uh-huh. challenging, unpleasant, all yeah, kinds right. of names that get labeled onto someone who says, no, that doesn't work for me. Or that's not good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, So there's different ways that we kind of talk about um, personal sovereignty and codependency and how those kind of things show up. And there's this wonderful quote by Brene Brown, who I I absolutely love. love. I know you do too. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, And this quote is, boundaries are a prerequisite for compassion and empathy. We can't connect with someone unless we're clear about where we end and they begin. If there's no autonomy between people, then there's no compassion or empathy, just enmeshment. And that's from Brene Brown and her book, Atlas of the Heart. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one for people in spiritual communities because, you know, I don't know if our actual human brain can comprehend the fact that we really are all one. And yet... And yet we still have to be individual and sovereign. Yes. So it's a, it's a tough balance to try to even comprehend. I don't think the human brain can wrap around that quite. Well, and I know it's, I mean, we're all interconnected. We are all one, mm-hmm. yet we are still having this life experience in our individual bodies. So while right. we're all one and we're all interconnected to this web of life, we still have our own autonomy, our own self within that greater connection to all, right? right. So in that it gets tricky. And I think, especially in our society, a lot of times we're told to compromise because it's not being polite. I, yes. I, a lot of women. situations, yeah, that I have I know that I've experienced of being like, I want to be polite. So I feel like I can't say no, but I really want to say no. Yeah. You know, like, and that's been a, a lifelong learning for me. And I know for you as well, it's like coming into a place of being able to stand in our personal power and not be worried about the fact that it might be upsetting for someone yep. to hold boundaries or hold space or... And to disappoint people and, you know, the people-pleasing thing that a lot of women actually have, um, you know, it, it is it is a thing. And I think it's important to kind of acknowledge it and go, okay, what's not working for me? And how yeah. do I move through that yeah. in a way that works for your own sovereignty, your own, your own truth? You know, as far as Brene was talking about, about enmeshment, that's really talking about codependency. And codependency can impact our personal sovereignty. Absolutely. And we're, we're not allowing for our needs to be acknowledged because we're too focused on being needed, which is a big codependent thing, and fulfilling others' needs, but we're not fulfilling our own, ne- our own needs. Codependency is a circular relationship in which one person needs the other person who in turn needs to be needed. So the codependent person is the giver, feels worthless unless they're needed by 
and make sacrifices for the enabler, otherwise known as the taker. So it's this whole circular thing that when you realize your personal sovereignty and that you have needs and you have a right to those needs and that you can't just be needed, you have to have your own needs filled. That changes a lot. It changes a lot of dynamics and relationships. Well, absolutely. And I think, you know, we're also living in a time where I think a lot of us are suffering from burnout because we're trying to do so many things and play so many roles and wear so many hats. And we feel guilty when we take time to rest or slow down, yeah. right? Because there's like, well, all these other people need stuff from me. Like I have to do all these things for everyone else. And we kind right. of shortlist our own needs. And when we stand in our personal power, it's kind of time to saying, no, I want to do this for you, but I can't because I know that it's just, I can't take on anymore. I don't have the capacity to do anymore at this time. Um, and honoring that and being okay with it and not, and it's hard, it's tricky, right? Because you, it's nothing yeah. you don't want to do for other people or that you're a bad person by saying no. It's just sometimes it's, you just can't do everything and you have to have some space for yourself. Yeah. And I think a lot of moms struggle with that because there's this like dichotomy of like, I have to be a good mom. So yeah. I have to be always the giver. And what you're actually modeling is that you're not modeling boundaries with your kids and you're not modeling the fact that it's important for everybody to take care of themselves. So it's a really tough thing, I think, for some people. Yeah. And I think when we actually start taking steps to stand in our personal power, it's incredibly empowering. Yes. When you take the chance to say no, it's a little scary at first. You're like, nope sorry, I can't do that today. I can't make that extra commitment. I can't take on that extra request or job. I just, you know, no, it's really freeing and kind of s scary at the same time, right? When you're first stepping out into that space. Saying, when you no. first exercise that, <laughs> that sovereignty muscle. <laughs> no, yeah. you shall not pass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it can be a little exhilarating. And scary at the same time, I think when you really start exercising this right, you have to stand in your power and your place and say no, or yes, you mean, because you get to own those choices, you get right. to choose what is good for you or not good for you. Um, and being able to just stand in an empowered place is a really amazing thing, but it takes work, right? It and does. Just show up there. We got to we gotta work at getting to that space. And when we do it and we start allowing ourselves to stand in our power, it's amazing the things that shift. It's amazing what changes for us and how we actually maybe have a little more energy. We feel less burnt out because we are honoring what our body's asking for us. We're honoring where our emotional needs are. Right. And I think you just nailed on that. I was just going to say that the way I moved through that is recognizing what my needs were in the moment. And that's not always easy to do. Um, but you know what? No, I don't feel like doing that right now. So I have to speak to that. Yeah. And as an, you know, an empath, people who are super empathic, you know, sometimes because you're feeling what other people around you are feeling and you're not even recognizing that maybe what you're feeling isn't your stuff right? or your need. And so it can be even trickier to kind of separate and say, Ooh, okay, I need some boundaries here so I can figure out you what's know, mine, what's mine or what's not. And sometimes it can be hard to just say, oh, I just need a minute of space so I can actually make a decision. Right. Without, to process it. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and that's something I've learned for myself is being able to give myself time and say, okay, let me get back Wait to you. Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on to that thought. Yes. Let me pause. Let's do a two minute commercial <laughs> and I'll be right back after these messages. Yes. <laughs> Once I've had a chance to process this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that could be, you know, a tricky part of it too, when you're trying to stand in your personal power and your sovereignty is figuring out what yours? What are your needs? What is your body saying to you about what's being asked of you? Does it feel right. really not good? And holding space for that. And to be in tune with your body and be embodied. And, and that's really part of sovereignty too. It's like, oh, I feel a little tightness here. What's that about? Yeah. It, it's same, you know, with processing and going, oh, maybe I need to just wait on that, making that decision right now because something's coming up for me that I need to kind of, you know, metabolize. So, um, and there's also, you know, we want to talk a little bit about sovereignty and spirit. So ah. for those of you who listen, who may yes. journey or are learning to journey or, you know, have um, a spiritual practice where you engage with your helping compassionate spirits, you know, sometimes when they first show up for us, they might show up in ways in a journey that's uncomfortable. Like, you know, we might be like, oh, wait, I'm not understanding or that's a little triggering for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you still have your own personal sovereignty when working with your helping spirits. You know, right. sometimes you might be meeting a power animal for the first time and they're showing you their teeth and they're being aggressive in some way because they're showing you their power or what medicine they might be bringing. But the fact that we're still 
in a human body might feel a little uncomfortable. Like, why are you being aggressive? You don't like me. Like it feels threatening when that's not really what they're trying to convey. Right. So you can ask questions. You can say, I'm not understanding what you're trying to ex- show to me or explain. Please show this to me in another way. Or I'm not comfortable with how this information is coming to me right now. So the other thing too, is that I have kind of experienced firsthand is that sometimes you're helping spirits kind of push you to stand up for yourself in a way that they're actually showing you're teaching you to to become more sovereign and to say no to them because that's actually what they want you to do. They want you to actually stand in your own power. And that might be part of your own learning curve that they're trying to teach you. Absolutely. And even when sometimes you get your helping spirits might say, ask you to do something because they're always asking us to step outside of our comfort zone and step outside of our box, you know, and sometimes we aren't always ready for that. And you can say, I'm not ready to do that yet. I hear you. I, I hear just don't you. know if I'm quite there yet. Yep. I'm going to table that. that. Thank exactly. you. <laughs> exactly. You know, I have learned to be able to take that leap of faith. And there has been times that spirits ask me to step up and show up in ways that are uncomfortable. And I feel like I'm being dragged. <laughs> Dragged out kicking and screaming, but every time I've done it, it's been really a huge growing and learning experience for me in so many different ways, you know, but you've really got to have that relationship there with your helping spirits too, to be able to take that leap of faith and say, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going (laughs) to, I'm going to go step into the unknown. And again, I think, you know, this is a, this is a whole other, you know, episode, but it's, it's so important. I mean, to me, shamanism really is about the bond you have with your helping spirits and being able to have them um, understand you in your in your good times and in your bad times and, and really feel supported during both times. It's yeah, important. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of that reciprocal trust relationship that you build over time with your, you know, your kind of helping spirits. And it's important. It's cornerstone of the work. Right. And, and they generally know where we're at. They know it's but they can be testing us. They test us really all the time and they can test to see where we're ready to go, if we're ready to go there yet, if we're ready for that new new piece of growth. Um, but they can be incredibly patient and understanding. Um, so it's it's nice to, if we could apply that same kind of love and compassion and patience to ourselves, because that might be exactly what they're trying to teach us. And especially when they're asking us to step into our personal sovereignty. Yes. So, Brie, what does spirit have to say about personal sovereignty? So my helping spirit said, personal sovereignty is about knowing who you are, the uncomfortable bits and all, and honoring your boundaries. Growth is inevitable, yet there are times we stem our growth in a desire to please others, to enable to keep us small or from truly shining our light. When a person stands in their sovereignty, they are giving voice to their needs and their boundaries. You have established a connection to your inner self, to your body, and understand when you need to say no or to speak your truth. When you stand in your sovereignty, you're honoring your truth and reclaiming your personal power. This is your life to live and experience, your time to choose what that will be. Allow yourself the freedom and courage to live it in a way that feeds and supports you. Standing in your sovereignty doesn't mean you aren't able to give and care for others. It means that you know where your limits are in doing so, so that you aren't compromising your ability to care for yourself in the process. Ugh, that is awesome. You know, we can talk about whatever we just talked about for 15 <laughs> minutes, but then they just nail it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my helping spirit said personal sovereignty is undeniably needed in this world. Amen. The external <laughs> noises are loud, and often the wisdom within is but a mere whisper. Tune into this whisper. As you evaluate the frequency of your inner radio, turn it up and you will find the truth inside you. Unfettered by chaos, personal sovereignty is achieved in every moment that one can tune within and honor the messages and intuitive knowing. It is not easy to be that boat rocker against churning waves. However, as you practice inner balance, you will come to understand your own personal sovereignty. Those who are not aligned with your inner truth and who do not respect this new power are meant to be let go of. Walking in your sovereignty, speaking it, shielding it, and carrying this truthful power as a sacredness will naturally bring in those who are tuned into that same frequency. It is these times that are diminishing personal sovereignty. Even those who believe they live outside the box may still be following the drumming of another drummer 
and not their own inner rhythm. Ooh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, the metaphor that they showed me, it's, I can't really, and I know you probably feel the same way, I, I can't really translate everything that I see, but I try to capture it as best I can. Yeah. Because it's so much more than just the words that you're given. There's imagery and there's feelings and color. And, yes. and at least as I experience it. And um, it's really hard to convey all of that because there's a sense of knowing as well that comes when yes. you're you know, in a journey and, and the mm-hmm. information you're being given. So it's really, um, it's really powerful. It is. So it's, you know, to be the translators, <laughs> you're always, you're always going to not translate everything like nothing in a language translates exactly to another language and that's that's the frustration sometimes i feel but anyway no completely agree so for those of you who know how to do a shamanic journey and would like to kind of explore this topic a little bit um you can find our journey prompt on our website you can journey to your helping spirits and ask them to help you experience your personal power and also ask them to show you ways in which you can reclaim your personal sovereignty in your daily life yeah, that would, that would be an amazing journey. Yeah. I, I hope that people might drop us a line and tell us their experience. You can find us on shamansafterdark.com. You can find Brie on treehearthealing.com and myself at Three Crows Healing with a numeral three. Those are There are also links on our personal pages on the shamansafterdark.com. So until next time, everyone, keep on shining your light. 